Hey, what's up, historians? Well, once again, Wizards of the Coast has lost their damn minds this week. They're all ramped up on cocaine and bath salts and are just going for some fucking big air. So many announcements we have to cover this week on this nerfs, buffs, bans, rebalancing, and spoilers, oh my, episode of Manorant. But first, I'm Hoshi, your beer brain host, who could use some rebalancing of his own on my intelligence. Uh, quick apology to our Twitch listeners last week. I apparently don't know how audio works. Uh, <laughs> and you are listening to the Man Rant Podcast, where I am always joined uh, by, <laughs> by possibly the worst MTG player to exist, uh, who tries to validate his abilities of getting good uh, by hosting an MTG podcast. It's Drunken Dork. Uh, all facts. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, if you've ever uh, gone to our YouTube and watched our gameplay videos, you'll see me misplay like one after another. It's it's hard. It's real hard to watch because like my brain, I'm pretty sure it just doesn't even exist anymore. It's just filled <laughs> like you, like you said, beer, beer brain. Yeah, yeah. It's just filled with beer up there. So like, these are like unconscious thoughts. I'm just clicking a mouse, you know, and like <laughs> words are coming out of my mouth, but zero thought involved in any of that. <laughs> it's just full autopilot. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, welcome back to the show, and uh, thank you for joining us. We are the Mana Dorks, and uh, this is Mana Rant, where we talk about everything in Magic, the Gathering, but mainly focus on uh, you know the historic format, and uh, we talk a little bit about alchemy, too, since apparently it just fucking affects historic now. There's no gain around yeah. that. Uh, so our show moves through the segments of, of Magic, uh, with the main phases being our main topics, and uh, you know tonight we're going to be going over the rebalancing, actually, in the draw phase, and then both of the main phases are going to be going over... Like, like some of the spoilers that we pick, we're not going over all of them because there's just way too many. So we're picking the ones that are, are kind of our favorite so far out of them. Uh, and with that, let's just jump straight into the show with our first phase, which is the untap phase. Untap. And untap is where we uh, untap some drinks to uh, start off the show with. So what are you uh, what are you drinking tonight, drunken? Uh, sorry, I was actually just reading some magic cards. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even realize. Oh, I'm doing a podcast right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> same as always. Uh -huh. Kegerator. Uh, nice. Coconut Porter. I, I think I drink this every week. It's an incredible. It's really good. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, well, this week I have a, uh, a fig sidecar, which I don't think I've ever had a sidecar before. And it's made with this like a... Oh. Uh, Fig liqueur that we've uh, been infusing, uh, some brandy, triple sec, and lemon juice. So I'm pretty excited to try this. Uh, oh man, yeah, that's good. Complex, very complex. A lot of tart, um, yeah, complex tones to it. Wait, I don't know what a sidecar is. What is a sidecar? It's liquor, brandy, uh, triple sec, and lemon juice. I'm. I don't drink a lot of brandy. That's more something that you have in like uh, eggnog or something like that. But it's good. Yeah, I like it. Sweet. Um, yeah. And, Sounds uh, disgusting. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, I enjoy it. Well, cheers, drunken dork, and cheers to everybody out yeah. there. Uh, cheers, let's everyone. have a good show. Hmm. And with that, we're gonna move into our upkeep phase. Upkeep, get ya upkeep! And upkeep is our Reddit rant segment where we look to the internet for people bitching and complaining about Magic the Gathering. Um, so it takes almost no time to find anybody for this segment. I basically just open up uh, <laughs> Facebook and there is some guy. <laughs> and that's what we found oh. this week, right in Facebook. Uh, we're going to the Magic the Gathering Arena MTG where so much of <laughs> the Reddit rant posts are found. I just spent like, I was actually on reddit for quite a while this week and i um uh, like today and i was like man i'm not finding anybody i <laughs> i opened up i don't believe that i i know it was <laughs> like i found a hard, i was having a hard time on reddit i opened up facebook and then boom right, right, right there and then right there right in front of my eyes was christopher hasten <laughs> and christopher he has to say uh just watching someone play with himself for <laughs> forever on turn three literally cast 26 spells as then uh finally hits grape shot for 26. magic is a game 
Games are played for uh, for they are fun. How does someone think uh, playing a completely solitary game is fun? So a little quick one this week. Uh, Did you write this? No. The grammar is like <laughs> I know. Is, is a Hoshi top notch, uh, you know, fucking little statement. Here. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. It, it's always, yeah. And I read these posts full of these bad grammar too, which is just like a, a double fuck. I'm getting fucked on my hands here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I also sound like I wrote this because I was, I hate watching people just like jerk themselves off while you're, uh, yeah. you know, playing the game. They, you know, I have a fellow <laughs> a compatriot right here. So what do you think, Drunken, about it? Uh, um, yeah. I love jerking off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, also on Magic. Yeah, you um, do. But, yeah, you, uh, do. you know, honestly, it, it, this kind of stuff doesn't really bother me generally. What mm-hmm. does bother me, and I've mentioned this many times, this happens to me all the time. I'll yeah. let people get their win off because I just mm-hmm. want to see it happen. But when they go over the top, like... When they're unnecessarily casting stuff, yeah. it immediately I I get enraged. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm conceding right away, right? Yeah. Like, but I generally won't. I I won't concede until like I know I know they have the win. It's just they like when they the when they yeah when they unnecessarily jerk off. It's like you know they can kill me with say 25 points of damage just Mm -hmm. in case I have mana open or something. And even though I have 20 life, like that's understandable because like maybe I have a card or something. I don't know if there even is a card, but um, anyway, like I get that. But um, like when they're like, okay, I just want to fucking jerk off and like, (laughs) woo, I want to like, I want to hit you for 55 damage and it's just super unnecessary. And they're going through their whole deck. Like that's, that's when it starts really bugging me. So I, I get this. I get the, what uh, Christopher Henson is saying, you know, like yeah. I kind of yeah, <laughs> it picture. can be a little annoying. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I have played against this deck too, the grape shot one where it's just they just bounce yeah. this guy back and forth uh, like, you know, to their hand a thousand times. And I played against it. and I was like, are you fucking kidding? This is taking so long. So I just left. I just auto passed and I just like I went and did something for a while and then I came back and then sure enough, he got grape shot off and killed me. I was like, OK. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and just like and watch him just, yeah, fucking jerk off for like 10 minutes, dude. Like, and it's yeah. not completely the the player's fault. Yes, it kind of is for him playing that deck, but it's more I more blame Arena for not finding a good way to like, you know, to do a loop like that and like do it quickly. Right. You should be able yeah. to like, you know, the game should be able to recognize that you're doing a loop and be like, hey, do you want me to do this for you a certain amount of times quickly? You know, that would be fucking awesome if you could do that, Wizards. Are you listening? Yeah, wizards are, <laughs> are listening? No, that's no. never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I know. That that's good. Then, I mean, yeah, true. it sounds great. Like, that would be really good, but it prevents yeah. people from um, having fun because part of the fun to some people mm. is jerking off for That's like 30 true. minutes you yeah know? the pain and suffering of others absolutely is. yeah so, yeah uh yeah i mean i i i'm not a huge combo player but i recognize that hey it's something fun for people but also it is supremely unfun to play against these ones where you just sit there and do this for fucking ever the squirrel combo we talked about it playing against the, the stupid cat oven combo it, they're fucking awful to play against uh yeah. even though they may be fun to play they're just yeah it's just a nightmare <laughs> and it feels like this is christopher's first time seeing one and he's just sitting there like what and the fuck so i mean uh, maybe fucking christopher plays like a uh, cat oven and you know <laughs> people generally that, concede to him that, and that would like, be so funny he's like hey wait a second <laughs> I'm, super, I, I'm I'm I, the only one hey, allowed the, to jerk off here. I'm the jerk off king, not you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. Well, that was right around. Hey, if you guys find something, uh, you know, a funny post out there or whatever, just uh, send it our way. Uh, and with that, let's move into our draw phase. Let's draw. All right, and draw. We're finally gonna start getting into some of this news we've been hearing about. Yeah. This news with MTG news. Brought to you by possibly the biggest headed anchor on planet Earth, Drunken Dork. And and me, That's I guess, me. too. I'm, I'm also here. Yeah, and uh, you. You as well. <laughs> but, but mainly, mainly Drunken Dork. Uh, so, first off... I don't, I don't know why you're emphasizing <laughs> that. All right. 
I don't right, know. I just, got I just, I just want to. Uh, so, anyways, let's first let's talk about uh, the first announcement that they made this week, which was the banned and restricted one. And uh, this really did not affect us in historic very much. Uh, the only thing that did come out was they finally banned memory labs. Hey, so we uh, we got our wild cards back. And then, yeah. in a move that shocked almost no one, they unbanned to fairy time raveler. What in the fuck? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll talk about that more when we get into rebalancing. But man, their golden boy is back. They uh, they fought banning him for so long, and then everyone was like, "Would you please fucking ban this card?" And they were like, "Fine, we but we really like him though." <laughs> it's like, okay, we're, we're we know you have a hard on for Teferi, but please, you made a like a ridiculous card with that time raveler one, so. Uh, and then let's look at the next one. And so uh, they did a rebalancing and they, they gave news on the rebalancing. And I just wanted they wrote a big, you know, long fucking thing on it. And there is one yeah, paragraph that I really want to talk about, though, because this one really did affect us. And it's uh, after closely monitoring our first round of alchemy rebalances, we're happy to report that they had minimal impact on historic win rates among existing decks. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, well, they're happy about it. No historic player is happy about it. Uh, and then they continue. But we also understand players' concerns over future unknowns. Oh, do you mean the constant bitching that you've been getting from all historic players about this? And they go, based on the feedback aka uh, bitching and ranting at them for this, uh, we, we will be weighing the potential historic impacts more heavily in our rebalancing decisions, starting with the adjustments we're announcing today. So, uh, wah, wah, bad news, dude. Uh, they are not doing what everyone wants, which is uh, not letting alchemy affect historic. They're not doing yeah. it. They're just now they're going to consider they're like, hey, I guess we'll consider historic now. I mean, because clearly they didn't fucking do that the first time. Right. So I I mean, yeah, I but what I get out of that is mm -hmm. that like so the cards that they did rebalance um, that are already in historic. Yeah. Are, are not like they are not anything big in historic. Right. Like the ones they just rebalanced, not the ones they originally rebalanced, of course, because, you know, faceless saving is huge. Um, but yeah. like. You know, these other ones that we may or may not talk about, um, they like the way they rebalance them. I mean, the, them rebalancing them isn't going to affect our format at all. And what I got out of it is maybe like going forward, if like there is a card in Alchemy that really affects Historic, um, that they'll consider like m maybe not rebalancing it in our format, you yeah, know, depending on like maybe uh, the it's way it's used. But but who knows, you know, like that's just me trying to give uh uh, Wizards of the Coast, uh, the benefit of the doubt. It's just, it's fucking dumb. Like, why would they have it? That's like saying, hey, you know what? Modern, the decisions that we make in modern, those should affect legacy, right? Like, why not? That's that's basically what's going on here. These are two formats yeah, it is. You're that right. are on completely different fucking power levels. And you're like, hey, I'm going to have one, uh, the one that's way lesser of a power level affect the, uh, you know, uh, the other one, it's fucking dumb. They would never do that. Like the legacy players would lose their fucking minds if they did that. But uh, absolutely. You know, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so let's take a look at this goddamn rebalancing uh, shit show article that they put out here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's yeah. that's Christopher. I think we've had enough of him. So uh, let's look at these card buffs that we got. All right, so the first one, uh, this is clearly, they are really loving the dungeon, dude. They're yeah. trying to go straight back. Yeah, in. CY, I believe it was CY in our Discord, with, <laughs> which if you're not part of our Discord, please join. He's like, man, they really want people yeah. to fucking uh, venture into the dungeon. Yeah, you know? he was like, Watsy's He's like, please, will anyone <laughs> adventure into the dungeon? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so that first one, fuck it, no one gives it. That card's still bad. Yeah, no one, uh, no one gives a shit. This one, this, I think. The second one? Yeah, go for it. Oh, you mind if I go over yeah, it? Yeah, 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 assemble from parts. Yeah, uh, this, this is, is a bag. card I was really excited for. Um, like coming into Historic, I was like, oh, cool, more reanimator stuff, which I love, you know, like mm -hmm. talked about, uh, you know, many times in our podcast that like yeah. I, I just really always want to do reanimator style decks. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they made it a little more powerful. And yeah. like um, what they said is we felt that dream of... Uh, we felt the dream of reanimating a creature on turn four with assembling from parts 
was too difficult to achieve. Changing the abilities mana cost will make it a turn four reanimation much more consistent, but will require a heavier commitment to black to support this uh, adjusted cost. So yeah. um, it was, I believe, four mana to reanimate. Now yes. it's three mana to yeah. reanimate, Which is significant. but it's one black black. Yeah, yeah. that's that's great. Mm -hmm. With ramp, you could reanimate something on turn, turn three. Yeah. Well, not even um, not even with ramp, if because uh, you can cast this. Uh, so, like, if you had a faithless looting on turn two, right, and you or turn yeah. or turn one, whatever, and you threw something big in the bin, and then turn two, you can cast this at the end of your opponent's turn because it's an instant, which is fucking awesome, yeah. and then target something in your graveyard, give it this ability, then turn three, boom, you could hit a turn three easily yeah. with this without any ramp. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a really cool card, mm -hmm. and like I I tried using it in Alchemy, mm -hmm. um, which we're not really talking about what we've been playing recently. But I yeah. I I actually mix between Alchemy and and Historic. I do really yeah. like Alchemy. I think it's a fun me too it's a fun format. I do too. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is gonna make like the idea of Reanimator way easier in that format. I don't know how it's gonna work in in our beloved yeah. format, but I I do like. It. I like this a lot. Yeah. I was thinking maybe Rakdos reanimation uh, with this because the heavier lean on black makes it a little bit harder. I don't know if it's better than the, like, you know, uh, the whatever the, the standard reanimate card that we have right now is the black white one. Uh, I can never remember the name of that, but I think this is great. This, yeah, this is actually like historic playable, I think. Uh, which is cool that they made something better. Yeah, that was like a kind of a cool idea, but just not quite there. And then them doing this, yeah, uh, makes it makes it great. So this is hey, uh, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised for once uh, <laughs> in these yeah. rebalancing. Because right now we have the uh, priestess and next, right uh, in historic the, that that the alpha, reanimates the something on turn alpha, three if no whatever. one. They gave it one. I still don't think we're gonna see it. You the what the the wolf the blood rage alpha. Oh yeah, no, it's no. That's this is that alchemy good? only. I play this in alchemy. Actually, it's a good yeah. card in alchemy. It's garbage in our format. Yeah, and then we have the cloister gargoyle once again. Please, <laughs> the, no. the dungeon one. Okay, still garbage. The dungeon descent. No, nope. this one was fucking ridiculous. Like how bad it was before. It's still bad. Yeah. It's still bad, yeah. and they've reduced the mana cost of the ability by three, and it's still fucking unplayable. That's how bad this card was when they made it. This is like the most junk rare I have ever seen, and it's still bad. Holy shit! Yeah. Uh, then yeah. we got the the planeswalker. They reduced her like her like you know not lackluster ultimate by one. I yeah. still, still think still bad. It's still bad. Yep. Uh, then we have face reversal. Face bad. Reversal, still bad. Yeah. Uh, find the path. Uh, find the path is uh, is okay. Yeah, it's like, okay. It's okay. But like the the enter the dungeon just like the it's so lackluster what you get out of it. Yeah. And then we have a uh, puppet razor, the increase the toughness. What? I, okay. It's still yeah. bad. Uh, okay. Bad. <laughs> still bad. And then we have uh, um, yeah perpetuous drop. Bad. Yeah. Still bad. Um, uh, tri triumphant adventure. Yeah. Bad. I mean I'm it. Uh, I, I actually use this in uh, Alchemy, but yeah. yeah, I mean, 2 1 from a 1 1, yeah. no big deal. I, I now, just, yeah, this the, is the one, the 2 1 part of it just sucks. Yeah, go on. And then, so next we have a uh, card adjustments. Yeah. Um, divide, so divide by zero. Mm -hmm. um, this card is used a lot in Alchemy, and oh, I've yeah. definitely seen it in uh, Historic. So mm -hmm. uh, this you know i don't know it the when it's played in historic this isn't really going to affect it too much because a lot of the stuff you're doing in historic is mana value four or less anyway yeah alchemy this is going to be affected mm -hmm. um you have any thoughts on that no not really i feel like this was like hardly a nerf to it yeah four or less if it was if it was four or above then i feel like this would be more of a nerf uh so i don't know i yeah it, it's really good against um against the dragon deck yeah and um so what it's what it's doing now is it's stuff. it's good against, yeah what like, it's doing now is things too like things that can't be countered yeah right? absolutely yeah. yeah well well i'm thinking of like an alchemy like it, it 
you know, it, it, it was really good against that deck and it was really good against, um, like the bigger mana cost decks. And now, you know, you can't really use it as Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, uh, we have fearsome wealth after, and basically uh, instead of this fuck. happening, Dude. reducing on your end step, it yeah. now reduces on your upkeep, which is huge. Yeah. You know, it gives your opponent a whole extra a turn whole to get rid of turn it. turn to kill it. And it has haste yeah. now though. Ooh. <laughs> you can get that yeah. one damage Ooh, in one, there, one, buddy. One haste. Get that one, yeah. that one face damage. Yeah. This, what, what do you think? What do you think of them doing this? Like the effect that it'll have on the dragon deck? Um, I think this is going to, going to affect it. Yeah, there's actually a lot of removal in Alchemy. Yeah, a lot of good premium removal mm-hmm. in that in that format. So I do think that this is going to be affected for sure, especially think- at one um one toughness. It's so everything gets rid of it. Yeah. Any type of removal can get rid of this. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was a really good card. It was the one card that you really needed. I feel like in the dragon deck to like get some headway. You know, like if you got that card, you were in great shape. And now I think it's fucked. I think this deck is fucked now. I think it's completely not. Uh, it's it's gonna drop in rank. I think it's probably uh, gone from like a tier one deck to at least a you know tier two from this uh, this hit. This one point five maybe. Uh, 1. Yeah, 5, I think it's yeah. still gonna be pretty viable because you need you well, need the removal to get rid of it. Yeah, and like there there are decks out there that don't that are top tier that don't run enough removal. Yeah, that's and true. But they also fucked over another card in the dragon deck as well. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, next, we have a uh, hole breaker horror, which is a, uh, a beast of a fucking card. If you can get seven mana to cast the thing. And uh, you're supposed to reanimate it with that first one that we talked yeah, about. That's, sure. That's, yeah. I that, have no that, idea. That would actually be. <laughs> That would, that would actually be awesome. Uh, but they uh, made it so this spell can't be countered is gone. Uh, which, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, like, I feel like that was a good way to help it end uh, stupid going on forever. Their, their, like, justification for doing this was dumb. Uh, they were like, oh, in the, <laughs> in the mirror match of, like, I counter everything that you do, this comes down and stops that nonsense. You know, so... I I think that's stupid. They're like, we want people to just fucking have more frustrating games. Uh, so we're going to allow this to also be countered. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to make a big difference to this card. I don't think so. Yeah, because it's got flash. So you're usually waiting before the end of your opponent's turn to do it too. But I can see in like a counter matchup how this, this would be, this sucks. You know, uh, them taking that out. And then this is probably the biggest... Uh, nerd. Yeah, this is this is your boy right here. Talk yeah. about it. Or yeah, girl. Is it a boy or girl? Uh undecided. Uh <laughs> this is okay. the Inquisitor the Inquisitor Captain though. And Inquisitor Captain. Look at all that a, text, man. Jesus. Dude, Christ. yeah, it's a fucking paragraph. <laughs> so if you haven't, they nerfed the fuck out of this thing though. Holy yeah. shit. Uh this card was a beast of a card that was probably too good. Uh everyone was saying, like, oh yeah, this thing's gonna get fucked. Uh and it did. Uh, except it got fucked in the worst kind of way because uh, it didn't just get banned and we got our uh, our wilds back for this thing. It got uh, like just severely nerfed now. So to the point where yeah. I don't even know if this is really playable anymore. It still probably is, but not nearly to the effect that it was before. So now before it was when it entered the battlefield, uh, you know, you got to search it. it, it uh, what is it called? It seeked two, two, three or less mana cards out of your deck. And you got to pick one of them and put them onto the battlefield. Now what they did is I heard people say that they made this a on cast trigger. And that is not true. It is worse than that. It is, uh, it has to be, you have to cast Cast from your hand. It's still an ETB, but you've had to cast it. So that is significant. I don't know if, uh, like people know the difference of, of that, but there are like, what's called a cast trigger is like the second you cast it, you get that ability. Right. Uh, and that's significant because if that spell was to get countered, right, then you would still get that cast trigger. Uh, like Ulamog, his trigger goes off even if you counter him. Uh, Inquisitor Captain now, you can counter Inquisitor Captain and you don't get that effect. So it's not a cast trigger. It still has to enter the battlefield to be able to get it. So this is that's, that's a severe nerf, I feel like, to this card. What, what do you think? Yeah. Do you think it's still playable? So I, I'm going to speak to what they said specifically in the... Okay. Um, 
in their write-up. Sure. They said, uh, we are making it more difficult to overwhelm the board with Inquisitor Captain. The, the interactions with cards such as Glass Pool Mimic mm -hmm. in Alchemy and Soul Herder in Historic made yeah. it too difficult for creature-based decks to attack uh, ad advantageously without relying on flying or forcing them to ignore combat altogether. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, this is what I think of specifically is... Um, Unfortunately, now, like, cool. you don't get that multiple interaction with this card, which mm -hmm. is what made this card so good. Like, I don't think this it, is necessarily better than Coco. I know we've said that before. Yeah. Um, I think in the right deck, it can be. Absolutely. But, but like, you know, that's fine. Nerf it in Alchemy. You don't need to nerf it in Historic. This wasn't making waves. Sure. Yeah. Soul Herder and this, like, could do some shit. But <laughs> yeah. how often do you Absolutely. run into those Soul Herder decks, right? Those Exile, they, those um, they were not bounce decks. Yeah, they weren't destroying the format at all. You know, yeah. I think that's just a justification that they're making to make this. Uh, this is clearly an Alchemy-driven nerf. Uh, not yes. historic, but they're like, oh, it was fucking up historic too. Look, yeah, we're saving historic. No, you weren't. That the soul hoarder yeah. decks, they're good, but they're not. Yeah, it's not like an S tier deck that needed, uh, you know, <laughs> that needed some so, some nerfing. I don't think. So when I read things like this, I yeah. think like I'm not a game designer, um, but I and like I have no idea what's involved in this, and like I'm I'm not trying to say it's easy or anything, but to no. me it seems like lazy lazy design where yeah. instead of like looking at two different formats and like seeing how it's affecting one or the other um they're just going in they're like okay we're just going to do it with alchemy and now it's it's fucking historic has to deal with it too and it just seems yeah. like lazy design to me it does it, it just feels more like they're being stubborn about it like they're like we just don't want to yeah. do it for you know we don't want to they don't want to balance two different formats they're just like fuck it i'm gonna balance one thing and then that's it and it'll affect the other yeah. one too and if you don't like it get fucked uh that's what it yeah. feels like so basically yep. yep yeah sucks okay next we got a uh, liar uh liar this sucks uh for for this one um this is a strong ass card uh, and they changed it to during your turn, you can do the flashback ability from your graveyard. So they stopped it from just being like a, you know, on your yeah. opponent's turn too. Well, so this, this was a deck. This is liar is a deck in alchemy. You Absolutely. don't see it in historic too often. Yeah. It's and, strong. uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. It is a strong deck. It, yeah. I it's think it's slow, still strong. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's still strong. It's mm -hmm. a slow grindy deck. Usually they cast liar and they don't start doing stuff until their next turn anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like, whatever liar is usually a bomb i think it's still a bomb even when it comes down so yeah this is liar i kind of agree with that that wasn't too bad of a nerf for it uh and then we got sanguine brushstroke this is like you just are not getting the life gain when you crack the blood that's tokens. huge when you crack the blood that's... tokens is it you think that's a big that's a big deal okay oh absolutely this is huge i mean that deck is that mono black deck is probably one of the most powerful decks it is in um in alchemy yeah. and like the fact that you're not gaining life because this deck will you know, it's pretty slow and grindy it and you is. can get down pretty low. Yeah. And then what this what this card does for you is it gains you that life back, right? Mm -hmm. From sacking stuff. So That's um, true. yeah, it is unfortunate. It's gonna take that deck down a little bit. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I was kind of unimpressed by that. I was like, eh, I don't know <laughs> if that really is gonna, you know, uh, curve it that much. I thought it maybe should have lost the the ping effect to it. I think that would have been more significant. Um, and then next we got Town Razor Tyrant. This is a huge uh, debuff to this one, I feel like. Uh, they added non-basic as a targeting restriction. So it came down, it, could, it used to be able to target any land to give it this like two damage, you know, perpetually per turn unless you sacrifice a deal. Now it has to be a non-basic land. Uh, so monocolor decks are like, you know, most likely not gonna be affected at all by this uh, dragon now. What do you think of this? Um, yeah, this is pretty devastating. Yeah. I will say though, in in alchemy, where this is the only place this card is used in, pretty much, pretty much, there is not many monocolor decks. It's and, true. Um, and even the decks that are monocolored are using lands like mm -hmm. um, the man lands and stuff. So yeah, I think it still has targets. It is sad though because this card is so fucking powerful, it man. Is. It, this thing kills me. Yeah, like you know. This this alone has killed me. Where like, all oh, right, yeah. it's dealing two damage. I'll allow it a turn or two, mm -hmm. and then I'm getting hit by for four, and then I sack my land, and now I'm one land short. 
Holy shit, yeah. man. This is like a game winner. So, you know, I'm actually okay with this. Uh, I don't know. I don't like it. I think this was overkill. I think they set, they 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 nerfed the whelp, and I think that was more than enough to, like, hinder this deck severely. Uh, I think doing Town Razor as well is really fucking this deck over. Because before, this was a guaranteed hit for the, its ability. Now, it's not. You know, now it's, it's yeah. not guaranteed. There's a good chance that... You know, they don't have a man land or like any type of non basic out uh, by like, you know, turn four, turn three by the time you get this. So maybe. I don't know. This Fair one, enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I could be wrong. And then let's go to the and last one. And then finally. One. Yeah, finally. Ooh, yeah. Uh, oh, God damn it. You want to take this one away? I feel like you're excited. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hoshi's favorite, absolute favorite card <laughs> to Fairy Time Raveler. Yay. So from one white and a blue, it goes now to two white and a blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says your opponents can't cast spells during your turn instead of your opponents can only cast spells at sorcery speed, right? That's what it said before, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so now instead, you can still cast instants on your turn at any time. You can still do combat tricks and stuff, yeah. which is a thing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but you just can't do it on your opponent's turn. Yeah, and then it says um, you can't do until shit your next on turn. Their turn. <laughs> you can do yeah. like you can do like abilities, and that's about it. And then I think everything else is the same, right? Um, yeah, a a absolutely. Yeah, everything else is the yeah. same, except for his loyalty went up as well. So he's actually he has oh, yeah. more loyalty now than he had before. So he's even harder to fucking kill. He can come in and then be like six. Um, he yeah. was three before, right? Three. No, he was or? four. He, he was, was four. He was okay. four. So he still was like he was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> he was such an overpowered planeswalker when yeah. he uh, came out. He fucking was in any deck that had uh, blue and white. You know, any deck that yeah. had that, you throw to. He was in a wall deck that I had because he was just so strong. Like there was no way you could not play him. You know. Yeah. Like, he improved any deck that he went into. He was, like, way too generically strong. Their their justification for this is fucking, is so silly, too. They were like, oh, we think he's, we think he, we're, we're adding to him because we want him to fight against control decks. Are you out of your fucking mind? This is absolutely going in control decks. <laughs> so that that is what they said before. Too. Yeah, they, they said that exact same thing. So before. stupid. All it was yeah. ninety percent in control decks. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. what? What I, are you talking about, wizards? Like what? It, <laughs> this, yeah. this is a control card for sure. It's a bounce card that stop that turns off your opponent's uh, fucking instant abilities on your turn. This is like this is a control card. I mean, um, it's going to be yeah, played. I, it's absolutely going to be played. I, I think. absolutely think it's going to be played. I definitely think it's way less powerful. Well, yeah, um, it was. It needed to be banned. I hope it's fucking less powerful. That'd be absurd if they were just like, yeah. well, you know, uh, they made it cost one more, but they also up the loyal. I don't think they needed to up the loyalty. That's for sure. Uh, you know what? I there is one saving grace from them bringing this back, and that is huh. they gave it to us. I did yeah. not have to rebuy this like I did with Omnath. So I'm pissed about Omnath. Uh, this one I'm not as pissed about because they just gave it back to me. So I have four of these, so I can try it out and actually see if it's as uh, still good as I think it's going to be. Um, but you know, I don't know why. He didn't need to come back. Uh, turning off instance yeah. is not something that's fun in the game. It's like well, this is obviously a thing to get people to like get back into Soric or okay. get into um, alchemy. Like I, I, this this card is like um, it's huge, right? Like everyone love it. who plays some people, some people yeah. love it. Toxic. Yeah, everyone who plays Magic knows, like, Teferi Time Raveler, fucking three mana, worst, like, most powerful card ever. I mean, not really, but, like, no, Oko, you know, in recent a, history, yeah. you know. He was a tick down from Oko. Oko was Yeah, real. absolutely. <laughs> you know, he's, and, he's still ridiculous. And I think it's going to drive people back into, like, deck building and, like, you know, burning wild cards, spending money and that kind of stuff. I do, I do think, you know... Um, uh, Jacavia says uh, that's not going to be played, but I do uh, think we're going to see it for sure uh, in historic. I haven't I haven't played it uh, historic today. I think everything got updated today, correct? It did, yeah. Me um, either. Oh, and oh, yeah, no, I, I haven't played, played today yet. I played one. I, I played uh, and a, this guy Water that joined our uh, Discord. He uh, made a Demir deck, and I was playing with that, and it's it's fun. Nice. Yeah. 
That's fine. Yeah, and I, I, I just think that, like, yeah, we are going to see it. It's just not going to be as, you know, as potent as it was before. Well, with that, then, we'll move into main phase one. Main phase one. All right, and in the main phases, we're going over uh, the spoilers. They just dropped a shit ton of spoilers today. There's no way we're going over all of those because this will be like a nine-hour episode. <laughs> so let's yeah, just go. No. So let's jump straight into the first spoiler. Uh, Drunken. This is the one that you're probably most um, excited about that they spoiled today, right? Uh, so take it away. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm most excited about it, but I am. Okay. Yeah, it is very exciting for sure. Um, so yeah, we picked three each out of all the cards and these are cards we think are going to be used in historic and uh, the first one i picked was the reality chip and that is one in a blue for a legendary artifact creature equipment jellyfish and it says you may look at the top card of your library anytime which is uh so a two mana and it's a zero four. Uh, look at the top card of your library anytime. Seems pretty good. Yeah. You know, that's definitely, a, I think, a usable card in a weird deck, but like not not great. No. And then it says, um, as long as a reality chip is attached to a creature, mm -hmm. you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. So that's huge. Oh, yeah, I think. Um that could be like a, that, that's just a really good uh, static ability. And Absolutely. then it says uh, this is a, a new ability that we have here. Reconfigure two in a blue attached to target creature you control or unattached from a creature reconfigure only as a sorcery while attached. This isn't a creature. So. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I think sorry, I was looking at what Jacavio was saying uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think this is this is interesting. You know, we've seen stuff like this before where we can attach creatures um, to other creatures with, yeah. you know, uh, right. Monstrous or what, whatever the fucking thing was. Um, uh, oh, I anyway, know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, but usually those are like on cast or something. This is. Yeah, a, a weird, exactly. This is one where you it's an equipment. Basically, it comes in as a creature, which is awesome because equipment decks, I feel like just like they you they don't have enough you know they need a little bit more power and so having your equipment come in as a creature at first and then actually having a creature especially a zero four this can help you uh you know stabilize her a little bit so i like yeah. the, i like this turn that they're doing with equipment as uh you know an equi yeah. an equipment aficionado over here you know <laughs> I, it I makes like it, it more removable that's the problem yes, right where it does. like I it makes it much easier to remove than a normal equipment because Absolutely. it doesn't have to be you don't have to just have like something that gets rid of uh, artifacts yeah. right you can just get rid of a creature now with this thing if it's just sitting on the board it's true but um i i just like yeah the versatility of it is uh is interesting it's mm -hmm. you know it's weird that uh it doesn't say it like gives your creature for defense, right? Mm -hmm. For toughness. No, it doesn't. All, all it does is yeah. have that ability to play stuff off yeah. the top of your library. So you're paying three mana to get that ability, and you need to have a yeah. creature. So the reconfigure thing is, uh, it's cool. Yeah, I like it. I think it's sweet. Uh, all right, anything else about uh, uh, the reality chip? No, no, okay. I think uh, that's about it. Sweet. All right, well, let's move on to uh, my first pick was the uh, the Wandering Emperor. And uh, if you played War of the Spark, you might have uh, remembered the Wanderer uh, Planeswalker that was in there. And, you know, it was kind of like a disguised character. And now we know who she is. Uh, she is the Emperor of Kamigawa. Uh, and so it is a four drop legendary planeswalker still no name attached or just legendary planeswalker uh, mm -hmm. and this is fucking cool it has flash uh as far as i know this is the only planeswalker that has flash uh do you know of any uh shit i don't know i want to say there is one more but i'm probably wrong but keep I going i can't think of it anyway so it's a planeswalker that has flash its static ability says as long as the Wanderer uh, Emperor entered the battlefield this turn, you may activate her loyalty ability at any time you can cast an instant. So she comes in. Uh, she's basically a fucking combat trick, which is why I love her so much. So yeah, she's a planeswalker. Cool. And so her plus one is put a one one counter on a target creature you control. It gains first strike until the end of turn. Awesome. That's a combat trick right there, right? Or yep. negative one, uh, create a 2-2 two -two white samurai creature token with vigilance. Okay, cool. She's got a way of protecting herself. And the negative two, which is exile target tapped creature. 
you gain two life. So man, you can flash her in, exile something, gain two life, and then have a planeswalker on the board next turn. Uh, yeah, I love this card. I think it's really good. Yeah, four mana is a little steep for our format, but uh, I still, I still really like it. I think it's, uh, I think this is going to be playable for sure. What do you think, Drunken? So I, I like this a lot too. When I was looking through the cards, yeah, um, four mana is steep, but honestly, yeah. when you're playing this in a like a control deck, say like blue white ramp, for example, uh, where you're playing a lot of spells on your opponent's turn, yeah like letting your opponent play his hand out and like you know maybe countering stuff or maybe he or she doesn't have anything to play that turn and then you just play a fucking a planeswalker at the end of their turn yeah. and then you minus one and you get a two two and then the next turn it's a three three and then like after that you can get another two two it's like a slow grindy planeswalker yeah. that i like which is on almost like very shocking to me that you chose this because this is that's what this speaks to me is like slow grindy control decks really? although i'm sure it can fit into other things I, I, uh, yeah, yeah i feel like it's very versatile it's good in a lot of situations right yeah it's got a very good way of protecting you but you can also right you can make a samurai and then pump it up and then it gets first strike it has vigilance so like it, it makes good i loved uh planeswalkers that make tokens like this uh i really love decks like that i'm i'm weird I, I like a lot of weird stuff yeah i hate like hardcore control most of the time but i've been playing demir all week so i don't know whatever <laughs> i i'm kind yeah. of yeah i'm strange uh but yeah uh anything else about about the wander uh no i'm excited to try it out for yeah, sure yeah me too i I'm, I'm i'm in love with this card so far uh and then let's go to your uh your next card which is kami of transcendence all right so i had to pick this one there's there's a couple of enchantress enchantress style um cards that they've they've put out here in this set um and this is one i like because um kami of tran uh transience it's one in a green for a creature spirit and says it has trample and whenever you cast an enchantment spell put a plus one plus one count counter on kami of tran transience mm -hmm. now this isn't new this is something we've had like yeah. we've had like several cards in our format that can do this Absolutely. but then it says at the beginning of each end step if an enchantment was put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn you may return kami of transience from your graveyard to your hand nice. and it is a two two mm -hmm. um that's so awesome, man. yeah what i like with this i don't think it actually fits into the enchantress deck where this fits i think is going to be a um aura style uh okay. green white blue aura deck which <laughs> I, I used to play before blue white auras and black white auras yeah. um were a thing and that you know obviously the the um bant auras was garbage otherwise people would play it now <laughs> yeah. um yeah, and i think this kind of elevates that deck a little bit better um it doesn't give you card draw or anything but just the fact that you can like recur this got recurrence, uh, yeah. which is a form it of makes it draw. really good along with that you know that white aura that we have that you can cast out of your graveyard like yeah. dude um i i can't imagine Signalize. this won't see play yeah i don't i don't know if that that deck is going to become tier one but it's definitely something i'm excited for i i love enchantment style decks whether it's enchantress or auras and i'm i'm really excited to build with this i think this is going in transit i think what mainly they were going for with this though was um the sagas right because the saga is gonna die after its third turn or whatever right it's gonna it'd be sacrificed and then once it's sacrificed right you can pull this guy back if he's dead yeah. or put in there so i think maybe that's more of what they were kind of shooting for with the flavor of this well, because they put a shit ton of sagas yeah in this, um in this well set. the great thing about this though is like so at the beginning of each end step if an enchantment was put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn mm -hmm. you may return this to your hand so this can be enchanted and if it dies yeah. then it just returns to your hand you know yeah, like that's pretty cool yeah yeah it's <laughs> yeah it's pretty wild there's a reason that this isn't an, an enchantment creature because then it would just recur every single time you know yeah um, that's true <laughs> that's a good point uh yeah so i i yeah i think this card's cool uh i'm excited to fuck with it all right cool man uh well then uh with that let's uh let's move into our combat phase yeah dorkish combat and combat is the horseshit card game hosted by shrunken dork take it away 
what is up everyone? This is the Horseshit Card Game, and this is a game where I name five magic cards, and one of the cards is not, you know, it doesn't have to do with our format, or it's not in the top 10 or something. I, I change it up every week. But this week, what I did is I went to, um, what is it, Aether Revolt or uh, Kaladesh Remastered or whatever. Okay. And I picked four cards out of Kaladesh Remastered. And then I picked a card from Kaladesh and Aether Revolt that isn't in Remastered. And it's up to you, all of you, to figure out which one that is. Oh, yikes. Okay. Uh, so, so it's are you, not are you ready Kaladesh for this? Or Aether Revolt. Okay. Okay. It's not in Kaladesh Remat. It's not in our format. All right. So. Oh. Okay. It, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So. It's from Kaladesh or Aether Revolt. Okay. But it's not in the it did, historic it did format. Did make the cut for uh, Kaladesh Remat. Did not make the cut. Okay. Nope. Cool. All right. I'm I'm ready. I I know what we're doing. All right. Now. Okay. Awesome. All right. So uh, just coming off pick uh, my pick of uh, Aura decks, we have a uh, Conviction. It is one and a white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus three, and it has white return conviction to its owner's hands. Okay. And then we have uh, Implement of Examination. It is three colorless mana for an artifact, has a blue mana, sacrifice, implement of examination, draw a card. And okay. then it says, when Implement of Examination is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Okay. Then we have Propeller Pioneer. It is three and a white for a creature human artificer. It has flying and it has fabricate one, and it is a two one. Then we have Visionary Augmenter. It is two white white for a creature dwarf artificer. artificer. It has fabricate two, and it is a two one. Nice. It's got and then we have finally Curio Vendor. One and a blue for a creature Vidalkin, and it is a two one. I don't know any of these. <laughs> are you sure these are in our format? Uh, I don't Four of them it. are, sure. Uh, One of them isn't. Uh, fuck me. Uh, all right. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna go with uh, maybe the maybe the fabricate ones are in. Um, I don't know. Those sound okay. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the implement of examination. Uh, maybe that is the one. I don't know. It. Yeah, fuck it. I'll go with that one. I don't. I don't know. There. I don't know any of these. So Implement of examination. Yeah, I'm okay. just doing a wag right now. Wild ass guess. Throwing it at an implement of uh, examination. So, yeah. All right. All right. So um, you chose implement of examination, yeah. and Jacavio chose curio, and one of you two is right. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and so this week. Hoshi, you fucking idiot. You got it wrong, buddy. Uh, <laughs> oh, Chicago, applause, Chicabio. It. Yeah, it was Curio Vendor. I thought this one, you know, the giveaway here was yeah. they all had text on them except Curio Vendor. Oh, okay. I think when they were like putting these cards in the format, they're like, um, what is Curio Vendor adding to Historic? To, to oh, historic. absolutely nothing. It's a two mana, two one. <laughs> All right. We're not going to program that into the, <laughs> yeah. into the game. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. I, yeah. I thought implement of examination, I would have like maybe recognized the art or something, but I feel like this is one of the sets that I've cracked the least amount of packs from. Uh, I, I think me too. Yeah. yeah. So this, this was a tough one. Nice man. Yeah. You got me. You got me. I yeah. I didn't know any of them. That was I would have been. Fucking... I did not get Chicavio though. Yeah, Good job, Chicavio. That's true. Good job, man. Uh, well, how'd everyone else do out there? Uh, hopefully, someone else got that uh, Curio Vendor. All right. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. Well, with that, let's go to yeah. Main Phase Two. Main Phase Two. And Main Phase Two is where we're gonna finish up our uh, you know our top picks for uh, the spoilers right now. So. Let's go into the first one, uh, which is going to be my uh, second pick, which is uh, Silver Fur Master. And <laughs> a lot of people have been saying uh, this is Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for damn sure. Because <laughs> it is a rat ninja and it's an old, like, wise looking rat ninja. Uh, he is a two drop uh, for a blue and a black. 
it's just a normal creature rat ninja so that's why i'm saying this is not splinter because he would have to be a legendary creature if he was splinter right like uh, and he's not legendary so you can have multiple of these he has yeah, no, not definitely not splinter he's a mouse too he de- i mean he looks like a mouse he doesn't even look like a rat he well, just looks I like think, a fucking mouse think, yeah and his alt art one he looks more like a rat uh yeah, he's got ninjutsu for two, for a blue and a black. Uh, and then ninjutsu abilities, you activate cost one less to activate, which that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And other ninja and rogue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So this is a ninja slash rogue, uh, you know, uh, lord that we got. It's a lord that also reduces a ninjutsu cost. I think this yeah. is, uh, and it's not, it's non-legendary, so you can pack four of these uh, in a ninja yeah. deck for sure. This is, uh, if you're doing a ninja deck, I feel like this is, like, this is the auto-include, right? Four of, bam, slam in there. Oh, and also, it is uncommon, so easy to get this guy, too. Uh, it's a 2-2, so not too hard to remove it because it's only other ninjas get it, but you can have two down at a time. I don't know. I really like it. What do you think? um so i'm mixed about it i don't like like i don't think ninjutsu is going to be that powerful um and it never was powerful before and i yeah i don't think that's going to change but Mm. the fact that you can ninjutsu this and then like you can combat trick this um and it's a lord i think that's what makes this card cool i don't think it's going to be great but i'm glad you're excited and i i am i am going to build with this card i mean it is an uncommon i'm glad you picked an uncommon um because no i didn't pick any you know with my three and um and i think it's gonna i think it's gonna fit well into a rogue deck um for sure yeah i don't think it like the the rogue slash ninjas will probably be the uh you know the most powerful deck uh especially in historic absolutely not maybe in alchemy uh it'll be a thing you know that's what i'm thinking yeah. um so maybe they'll do another alchemy drop to like boost ninjas like they did kind of for the the last set you know uh but, well you yeah. know like ninjutsu makes sense right in a rogue yeah. deck because rogue decks are combat tricks right mm-hmm. everything has flash yep. um you know you're never casting things like uh, you know, except for the one mana spells right you're only casting things on your opponent's turn or like doing combat trick style stuff so i mean it just fits well into that deck that yeah. deck fell like a couple tiers you know over over the past few sets but Absolutely. um yeah, I, I do think I do think this is a it's a cool card. It, it's I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, it's all about the support around it. You know, he's enabling ninjutsu to be better. He's enabling ninjas to be better. Now it's up to Watsi to, you know, give us the ninjas that we need to be able to, you know, make the deck good. And so I know yeah. they're packing this full of ninjas. So we're they're still not everything's revealed yet. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it. I like the card design on it. I like that it's uncommon. Uh, so yeah cool all right absolutely we're moving on to your last card so take it away my last card or cards um so it's busiju who endures so um i love the original busiju i who uh, what is it who shaped the world i don't remember what it is but it's like you can cast instance at flash and it was a land you know um but anyway, Busiju who endures. It's a legendary land. It uh, it has tap, add a green mana, but then it has channel. We kind of discussed this already, like in a couple of podcasts ago. And it says one in a green, discard Busiju who endures, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non basic land an opponent controls. That player may search their library for a land card with a basic land type, put it onto the battlefield then shuffle uh then shuffle this ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control um so i really like these utility lands i picked this one um because like removal is always going to be probably my favorite thing opposed to like you know um putting creatures out i guess the white one has removal as well Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think these are going to be used in our format for sure. Absolutely. Um, like you could even have this as a sideboard card and like feel good about it. You know, you could run a 20 land deck and depending on what you're playing against, you can keep it in your sideboard and like put it in as an extra land slot. If you, you know, if it's a little more grindy of a, a best of three or, yeah. um, you know, or if they have enchantments. Right. So, yeah. um yeah, I like this a lot. What do you think? 
I think it's great. And it's protected from hand hate for a lot of things because it is a, yeah. hand, right? it's a spell. Yeah. Basi- it's basically, it's not a spell. It's an ability too. So it's protected. Yeah, from you can't, it can't even be countered yeah, generally. You'd have to counter the triggered ability of it, right? Mm-hmm. So that would be the only way to really stop it is something like Stifle uh, would hit this. Good point. So, um, yeah, it's very strong. I mean, being able to destroy an artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land, sure, they get to search for a basic land, but there are plenty of times that I would gladly make that trade, or you can use it as a land. To, I mean, this one's awesome. I mean... Untapped, too. Untapped yeah, land. Yeah. That's what makes it so strong. Exactly. It's so good. Yeah. And then even if you... Right? If you already have one down, that sucks. Um, but the next card that I'm talking about might make it so you actually can play it if you needed to as a land. Oh. <laughs> let's move on to that. Yeah. All right. So uh, my last pick is going to be Mirror Box, uh, which uh, a lot of people are loving and hating on right now, which is my kind of card. Divisive uh, card. Yeah, very divisive <laughs> card. Uh, so <laughs> I hope you're right, Dre. Uh, so this is a three drop artifact at rare, and it has the legendary rule doesn't apply to permanence you control. Uh, each legendary creature you control gets plus one, plus one, each non-token creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with the same name as that creature. This is, uh, I feel, a great card. Uh, it itself obviously is non-legendary. I don't know why. You might as well make it legendary if it stops the legendary rule. That would be, you know, why not? Uh, yeah. But, so you can have multiple of these. So it stops the legendary rule, which is a Big downside to playing legendary cards, right, is the you, that thought of, like, how many of these can I put in my deck? Because, you know, the worst feeling is having, like, four of the same legendary card in your hand. But if you got this thing on the field, that's the best thing, <laughs> you know? Unless they have artifact removal, then you're fucked. That's the major downside to this card, right, is if you had a bunch of uh, legendary creatures out and then they kill this thing. And then they uh, they all die because the legendary rule comes back into effect. So that's the bad thing about this thing is um, artifact removal would hit this deck pretty hard, I feel like. But I think the outside is also, you know, pretty massive. It's a it's an anthem. It gets rid of the legendary rule. You get a multiple planeswalkers at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and then the last part, too, is like it, they don't even have to be legendary. They can just be normal, um, you know. Uh, creatures and they still get an anthem effect from having uh, copies of themselves out. Glass pool mimic would be amazing in this, right? Because there's plenty of times yeah. I've had uh, some type of glass pool mimic effect, and I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Copy my stupid legendary, and then it's just going to die. So, uh, what do you think, Drunken? So, um, like you said, it's divisive. I don't really care for this card mm-hmm. uh, too much. I, I'm not saying that it can't do stuff. Like, I think this is definitely a a Hoshi card uh, <laughs> because it's it's like a brewable card where you can try and do some pretty interesting stuff. I'm, I'm looking for um, a card like the first thing that came to my mind was uh, I forget what uh, what the card is called, but there's like a legendary creature that allows you to search for legendary creatures. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, no, and so know. this is like this is what made me think about it. And we have multiple stuff in our format that yeah. like you know legendary matters yep and so we have that um, one commander i forget what his name is uh, kethis not is it kethis not i think it is kethis it's yeah. so um so jacavio said oh, sisse no yeah. it's not that sisse is not the one i'm thinking of but, but yeah sisse that was like that. yeah yeah it does do stuff like that yeah, yeah. um I'll, I'll i'll get it right now i'm i'm <laughs> looking on um <laughs> I'm doing this live, everyone. Very yeah. professional. And, and, I know. I anyways, know. Yes, this is kind of like a, a janky card in, in some ways. But uh, there is a lot, like you were saying, a lot of legendary matter stuff. Uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast, that card is is nuts. I mean, it's pretty hard to uh, get to. But uh, if you do, it exiles everything besides, uh, you know, legendary permanence. So I guess it would actually kill this thing. So that <laughs> That would probably be a big downside uh, of that. Is it? Oh, have, here we go. It yeah. was uh, Kethis, the Hidden Hand, is yeah, the one I, I was thinking that's of. What I, that's what I said. I said Kethis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> you just ignored me. Yeah, You're that like, with along with. He's an idiot, which is true. Yeah. Yeah. 
that one along with Sisse, I think those two cards are mm-hmm. seem interesting. Like, yeah. I really don't think this is going to do a lot, but I do think it's going to do something fun. And I'm sure, Hoshi, you are going to have fun with it. I absolutely will. <laughs> yeah. Is, I, Until you don't. Sure. Until you, like, lose six games in a row and you're like, fuck this deck. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. I burned yeah. the wild cards again. <laughs> Watsy, you got me again. Yeah. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They're, like, enticing jank players like me to be like, well, what if I did this? <laughs> so yeah oh i don't know i i like it i think it's really cool so we'll see i'm definitely gonna make something with it at some point uh but that's it you got anything else to say about it obviously you don't care about it so uh no i'm all right cool it doesn't have removal attached to it so you don't care about it yeah (laughs) yeah no exactly (laughs) all right well with that that was uh you know all of our previews that we're going over so uh we'll move to our end step all right and uh, end step is where we usually go over, uh, you know, anything that we have outside of, uh, you know, the world of magic, except for uh, we're running a little long this time. So uh, I don't think we're going to get into that. And wait, uh, no, we have uh, we have our comments, questions and corrections. Do, do we have some this week? Um, it, it looks like Apollo dug into here. So Jacobio says, when the fuck is Apollo coming back? <laughs> and uh, I can answer oh, okay. that. Yeah, go ahead. Probably. Uh, they are annoying. Oh, he also said, "I have two roommates. They are annoying as fuck, but I can't kick them out. What should I do?" Oh, okay. okay. Well, which one? We do you can answer go both okay. of those. All okay. right. Okay. Great. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, when is Apollo coming back? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm gonna say, um, I don't know if he's ever coming back. Mm-hmm. He'll make a guest appearance, maybe once every fucking blue moon. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think, you know, he's got a lot of he's new to the military. He's about to. Move yeah, to he's got family. a lot of stuff. He's about to move to a, a new base in a couple of months. And so I think like once he gets settled there, he'll be making more frequent stops. But he is not a man that uh, juggles a lot of responsibilities very well. <laughs> so uh, he'll be stopping in for sure. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't count on seeing him every week. Uh, he, yeah, unless I mean, prove us wrong, Apollo uh prove us wrong so other than that though i don't i don't believe it's gonna happen so okay and then we have uh then the other thing i read from him i have two roommates they're annoying as fuck but i can't kick them out what should i do (laughs) i have (laughs) i have the perfect solution for you i think yeah what's that okay um bro just grab your laptop and move on the street dude (laughs) that's all you got to do find a couple cardboard boxes Uh you know um set your That's laptop true. up like next to a starbucks mm-hmm. you'll be living sweet you can play uh magic the arena fucking <laughs> you, you notice how i don't i don't use gathering anymore yeah, that's uh, you can play magic the arena uh-huh. uh all day with that awesome starbucks wi-fi i don't know if they have um I don't know if they have Starbucks where you live, but I'm sure they do because they have it everywhere. What do you what do you have to say about that? Oh, he said it, he needs to mention that that the roommates, they uh, they are my kids. OK. <laughs> oh, they're your kids. Oh, OK. Well, um, uh, in that case, you oh, need, OK, you need to move out. You need to flee. I hear Canada uh, is a nice place and uh, it's hard to track you there. You get away from alimony yeah. and all that kind of stuff in Canada. <laughs> That's uh, what I heard. That's that's my advice is flee. Flee the country. Uh, they can't get you then, you know, so. <laughs> or, yeah, or you can live on the street. Or um, what I would do also, if you're going with that option, the, like, living on the street option, uh, you know what? Why not upgrade your life and get an RV, dude? You know, you can live. Yeah. Uh, or, van, or hashtag van life. <laughs> yeah, you, you absolutely. A, a, a van gamer. You know that. Uh, oh, he's already in Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, then you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, in that scenario, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say, dude. Honestly, I think uh, my first thing I said still applies. Yeah, the streets. Just you know, abandon the kids, go uh, live on the street. In Canada, you it, know, and it gets cold there. That probably won't be the best idea. Get it, get a get an RV or a van. You well, know. you get those extra thick cardboard boxes yeah. is the solution. Or trash can right? fire. That's also a thing. Yeah, so. That is a thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the 80s. 
Uh, all right. Well, that was uh, questions, answers, and corrections. Uh, so if you guys got any any other questions or you want any uh, nuggets of wisdom like we just bestowed right, <laughs> right there, uh, feel free to, uh, you know, go yeah. on our Discord or uh, email us, I guess. And, uh, you know, we can check these uh, on the show again next week. And uh, with, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> with that, we'll move into our cleanup phase. Uh, clean up and clean up is our social media promo stage where we uh, get the wrong button there we go we have a uh nice. a youtube uh, that we do this on and then we have a uh, you know discord that we talk about a lot because it's awesome and then uh, we stream this live on twitch uh usually every thursday at eight o'clock uh and then we are on all the podcasting spotify uh itunes then we have an aether hub that we put our decks on uh if we have something yep. that you know we talk about on here we feature on here we generally throw it up on there and if you want to you know see what what we're playing that's a good spot too uh but you know if, always feel free to just you know hit us up on discord uh because we're generally on there and uh with that let's move on to uh the last and most psychotic phase of our show which is the discard phase drink them up mm-hmm. Boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here we are once again the end of the show uh drunken anything to say before we wrap uh- up See you, everyone. Thanks for watching, listening, whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. And if you're not part of our Discord, like we say all the time, please join. Very cool people in there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, tell us what you're playing too. Like, throw your uh, deck up in our channel. Uh, if yeah. It, if, you know, I always try and like pick up decks that uh, everybody's playing in our stuff, and uh, I, I like it. It's fun. Uh, it is. And with that, you know, I guess we'll just see you again uh, next week, right here, back on. Manoran. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. I had one little baby sip. I hope you had to fucking pound an entire fig sidecar or whatever the fuck you're drinking right now. Oh, man. I wasn't going to pound a sidecar. It's Michelob Ultra. (laughs) Oh, that might be worse, man. That, like, kills my stomach. Oh, it's just so much carbonation. <laughs> I, I took it pretty easy tonight, man. I have one. I only have one beer. Usually I'm like three beers in by the end of this. <laughs> My old man belly. <laughs> I can't take all the, yeah. all, the, all the carbonation, you know? Yeah, you uh, you were surprisingly unslurry tonight, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what came over me. I just, you know, I didn't have it in me. I couldn't, I guess you can't get hammered every single night of your life, yeah. right? That's, you know, I, I, you're wrong about that. Or can you? <laughs> yeah, you're wrong.